Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles. Of great millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Hara Kakurash. And um, Lord's will, the title of this lesson will be uh, Being Covered Doesn't Mean Being Comfortable. All right, being covered doesn't mean being comfortable. Okay, because, um, you know, I just want to go into um, an example. Uh, what well, was inspired through a conversation that we were having after our Sunday sit down yesterday and um you know the big bro Mathathi had brought up the example with elijah you know how you know he he uh, got to the point to where he wanted to die you know because of the things that he was suffering right um but obviously he was a man of the lord he is a man of the lord you know yahweh Shai himself said there was not a greater prophet than elijah you know so um a great man that was covered by the spirit the lord was definitely de uh dealing with him all right and delivered him out of all these various things, but it didn't take away from the discomfort that was felt in the tribulation. And this is something that we have to, you know, keep in mind as we're reading these different precepts, you know, about the Lord protecting us and guiding us and being with us. All right. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be comfortable at all times. As it says here in the book of Acts 4 and 12, I'm sorry, um, I want Acts 14 and, and 12. I meant 14 and 22. All right, this is the book of Acts chapter 14 and 22. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so this is mandatory. All right, we have to go through the tribulation. In the book of Revelation, it says, these are they which came out of tribulation and the tribulation is uncomfortable. All right, the fire is uncomfortable, right? But what does it lead to? All right, see, the tribulation is the discomfort, but the end result is the kingdom, right? So even though, you know, we know the Lord is going to be with us and that we're going to be guided and protected, we have to keep in mind the balance of, you know, we're going to be brought to the edge. Our, our faith is going to be tried. You know, the scriptures talk about proving a, a friend. All right, and the scripture says in the book of um, Sirach, the second chapter, that's why it says this in the book of Sirach, chapter two and verse one, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Now it says, if thou come to serve the Lord. Now, what does it say that the Lord is going to do for those that serve him? Let's read this real quick. All right. Isaiah chapter 65. In verse uh, 13, it says, um, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, behold, my servants shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. So this, these are benefits for the true servants of the Lord. All right. It says, Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So the Lord's servants are going to be protected. He's going to provide for them in the famine. All right. He's going to continue to guide and direct them. Right. And this is one of the the benefits, okay, of being a true servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? But that doesn't take away from this in the book of Sirach, the second chapter, verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, so, all right, you call yourself a servant, you know, of the Lord, all right? Uh, we know we're going to receive those benefits, right? But it says, prepare thy soul for temptation. Now, I want to go to... Look up this word temptation. The Spirit just told me to look up this word temptation real quick. All right. In the Edamon online temptation, it says act of enticing someone to sin. All right. Uh, an experience or state of being tempted um, to feel, try out. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So we're going to be tried. Our faith is going to be tried. You know, so the temptation is the trial. All right. That's why it says in the book of uh, 1 Peter 4 and 12. All right, first Peter chapter four and verse 12, it says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. All right. So we're going to go through the fiery trials. All right. And once again, fire is uncomfortable. All right. The heat becomes uncomfortable. OK, but in those, 
you know, moments of discomfort and so on and so forth, the scriptures should comfort us knowing the latter end. All right. To get us, you know, to uh, be able to endure the flame, to endure, you know, the sufferings, even Yahweh Shai, when it speaks about him and his suffering, it says um, the Lord in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says, um, how's it worded? Let me just pull it up real quick. Hebrews chapter four. <laughs> All right, so Lucky, uh, so this is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse, um, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse two, it says, looking unto Yahweh Shad, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. So, you know, it says, uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Now, when we go into this phrase, despising the shame, all right. And we consider, you know, what Yahweh Shai went through, the suffering that he went through. Scriptures talk about he was more marred than any man. All right. He uh, he was uh, sweating blood. All right. Showing you how, you know, how pressing that was on his mind when he met his uh, hour of temptation, so to speak. Right. At the, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed into the Heavenly Father to take the cup. If there was any other way, but he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, it's like, if there's another way, I, I don't want to go through this. All right. So there's things that we're going to approach in our walk or right, in this faith that we aren't going to want to go through to where the flesh is going to, you know, buck up. All right. And, you know, um, we have to fight to just submit to the will of the Heavenly Father as our, you know, as our Lord Yahweh Shah did. All right. Even though he was feeling that way, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. All right. So, you know, the things that we go through in our life is according to the will of the Lord. And if that's what he says we got to endure and go through, then that's what we got to endure and go through. All right. We don't make the decision on what we can, what we decide we we're going to suffer or how we want to be refined and everything like that. That's not that's not our um, that's not our um, a lot. All right. We don't have that authority. All right. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai takes us through what he sees fit to refine us. Right. So we don't make that decision. You know, we're under his will, uh, submitting unto him, right? But anyways, now that word despising, um, it says to contemn, despise, disdain, think little or, it says think little or nothing of. So, you know, one thing that strengthened Yahweh Shai to go through the pain and the suffering that he had to go through to think little or nothing of it, it was compared to the joy that was set before him, the kingdom of what's ahead or what's ahead, Right. So as we're in these different times, thinking about what's ahead will allow us, uh, will comfort us all right, and give us the strength to endure whatever it is that, you know, the Lord sees fit that we must endure, all right, to be accepted by him. OK, so let me um, go back to this in the book of Sirach, the second chapter, Sirach chapter two and verse one. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. So you don't just endure one thing and I made it out and. You know, that that's it. You know, uh, you ain't got to go through no more trials and tribulations. It's like, nah, the scriptures talk about constantly enduring. All right. Being able to suffer, being able to go through these different things and maintaining our integrity. Right. It says, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased in, at thy last end. So we have to hold on. You know, regardless of the trials and tribulations, the, the feelings and emotions that we have at certain times, we have to hold on. All right. It says, he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved, right? So if we want deliverance, that's not an option. We have to hold on, right? Regardless of, you know, what we're experiencing, what we're going through, the mental battles and the, you know, the different things, right? The tribulation it says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Our impatience goes into suffering, right? The ability to suffer, you know, that's a skill. Okay, that's a, that's a, um, a, a character trait that's developed, all right, patience, the ability to suffer and go through certain things and um, still maintain your integrity, your faith, right? You know, not come up against the Lord, not, not you know, whatever the case it may be, still trusting in the Lord. But it says, uh, it says, uh, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, Right. So, you know, just bringing this out for that main precept right there it says gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we're going to be put in the furnace. All right. We have been appointed unto these things. Right. Going back to this in the book of Acts, the fourth, uh, the 14th chapter. All right. I don't believe I finished it. 
All right, it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. You know what? I did finish it, but I wanted to look up the word tribulation. All right, so uh, it says, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. And this is why a lot of people don't, you know, uh, can't, and it's through the spirit, of course, you know, uh, endure this walk. All right. You know, because this world is, you know, is geared towards just pleasure and fun and whatnot. And, and you know, they aren't thinking about the sufferings, the hardships and so on and so forth. That's necessary for, you know, personal development, the growth and to be accepted by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This is a part of the refinement process. Right. The scriptures talk about the broad gate that leads to destruction, you know, but straight is the way. All right, and narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. All right, it's a path of difficulty. All right, the straight gate is a path of difficulty. All right, and a lot of people don't want to bring themselves under the discipline that it takes to uh to to battle your flesh, battle thoughts, and so on and so forth. It's easy to cave into the flesh. It's easy to just give in to you know whatever you feel and your desires, but actually being disciplined that takes that uh that takes a lot. All right, that's why the scriptures talk uh, talk about the Holy Spirit and. One of the things that calls the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of discipline, right? So within this walk of ours, it takes discipline, you know, and it takes discipline uh, in the midst of adversity. All right. And this is something that's developed in us. All right. Character, you know, once again, character and quality traits that are developed in us through through uh, listening to these lessons. All right. Through through uh, being watered all right, by by the word, all right, reading and, you know, through fasting and, you know, the Lord supping with you through different things. Right. This is all a part of that, right? So this word tribulation says a pressing, pressing together pressure, right? So that's what it is. You feel that pressure on your mind. You feel that pressure upon you like, you're, you know, uh, it's a weight on you, right? This is what we have to go through, all right? The scriptures talk about uh, taking away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer, right? Well, dross is purged off of silver through fire, through the affliction. So the Lord being the greatest teacher, he's going to allow us to go through different afflictions, to refine us, to get the dross off of us. And we have to accept that this is what it is. And even though we know that we will, you know, uh, be delivered out of all these different things, we have to know that this is a part of the process and what leads to the Lord's servants eating. All right. As we're going to grab in the account with uh, Elijah. All right. What was his mental estate? What was he going through before, you know, the Lord finally fed him? All right. You know, what was he suffering? All right. How was he, you know, what was he experiencing? prior to that point. So even in our walk in these things that we're entering into, as we enter into the time of Jacob's trouble and the evils to come and everything like that, there's going to be a lot of things that we go through before the deliverance comes from out of that situation. All right. There's a lot of refinement and things that the Lord is going to purge out of us until we get delivered out of these different instances at times, man. Uh, but it says metaphor, oppression, affliction, tribulation, distress, uh, straits, right? So let's uh, grab this in the book of Revelation, the second chapter. Uh, Revelation chapter two and verse 10. It says, fear none, of no, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So once again, that's mandatory. We will suffer. But it says, don't fear those things, right? In the book of First Thessalonians, the third chapter, it says, let no man be moved by these afflictions, knowing that we are appointed thereunto. So we're appointed to go through afflictions. If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. If we want to be delivered, we got to go through afflictions. There's no way around it. You can't go around the fire. You can't jump over the fire. You can't slide underneath the fire. We have to go through the fire, right? But it says, uh, I know thy works and tribulate, Salaki, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So... You know, um, we have to remain faithful and that's when we get the reward. But that doesn't take away from the tribulation, and the sufferings that we have to go through uh, prior to it. In the book of Sirach 4 and 28, it says, strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee. So at times we're going to be brought to the brink of death, literally. All right. We've read it about our forefathers and, you know, in these various things. That's why it says the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and uh, comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So through knowing these things and being prepared, we shouldn't be caught off guard. We shouldn't be moved by these things because the Lord already warned us that we have to go through it, right? You know, and knowing that the Lord is going to deliver us, okay, as it is written. See, the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. It says in the book of uh, Psalms, the 35th chapter, Psalms chapter 35, in verse uh, <clears throat> Psalms 35 and 19, let no, oh, uh, no, nah, that ain't it. Maybe I meant Psalms 34 and 19. 
Yep, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh delivereth him out of them all. All right, so we're going to go through a lot of the afflictions, but we're going to get delivered out of all of them. Plain and simple. That's what it says. That's what's going to happen. Okay? Deliverance doesn't always look like how you want it to look or how we may want it to be. You know, how we want a situation to play out, but it's according to the will of the Lord and deliverance is going to be there. Okay? We just have to have faith and belief in that. Going back to that Sirach, the second chapter says, Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. So if we lose our faith, then we won't be defended. But if we keep our faith through the end, all right, the scripture says how the Lord will not, uh, the hope of the godly shall not be frustrated. All right, it's not in vain. If we keep our faith, all right, the Lord is going to, you know, make sure that he, uh, he uh, takes care takes care of us and delivers us out of all of these things, man. Even Paul had mentioned real quick in the book of uh, First Timothy or Second Timothy, <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter three and verse ten. It says, uh, "But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience." persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me, right? So this is speaking about all the hell that he went through, but he is like, you know, the Lord delivered me out of all of it, either way, one way, shape, or form, <laughs> all right, you know? So that's what it's going to be, man, all right? We're going to be in a lot of different, you know, situations and you know, it's going to be uncomfortable and everything like that, but the Lord is going to fulfill his word and delivering us, right? I want to grab one more precept and then we're going to grab the uh, the account with um, the account with Elijah, Lord's will. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse uh, 68. <clears throat> it says, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Right. So on the planet in this time that we're entering into, they're going to they're going to have people in these constant uh, these sea camps or re-education camps. Right. You know, trying to convince them to get sea hipped and all types of madness is going to be happening in these various camps or right? a lot of judgment is going to be happening upon the wicked of our people. Right. You know, we're going to be caught in the midst of, you know, um, these different things. Right. But we have to remain faithful. All right. See, remember that uh, 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 the things that we go through is for us to be tried, you know, as the wicked of our people, they're experiencing these things. They're just going through it just as a as a judgment upon them. OK, you know, these things were created for the wicked, as it says, the 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 famine, death, bloodshed, the sword and so on and so forth. It says these things were created for the wicked. That's why in the book of Proverbs, it says uh, the third chapter. All right. It says, um. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. All right. So, you know, the things that are happening around us. Remember, this is judgment upon the wicked of those that didn't repent, those that didn't return. But as concerning his servants, it says, I've not appointed thee unto wrath, but to obtain salvation. My thoughts towards you are a peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You know, so we're going to be in the midst of these things. But the Lord is his mind towards us is to live to deliver us. That's why it says in the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, the Lord told Jeremiah this multiple times. Well, at least twice in this chapter, and I think he said it elsewhere. But Jeremiah 1, in verse, um, Jeremiah, uh, I'm tripping. Jeremiah 1, in verse uh, 8, it says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So the Lord is with us to what? To deliver us. And we have to believe that. All right. We have to stand on these words. All right. These are all promises. And the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. So if he said it, shall he not make it good? Shall he not bring it to pass? Is not his counsel <laughs> uh, immutable, as it says in the book of either Hebrews or Romans, man? You know, so these words are bond, man. And we have to have we have to show forth that faith in that. Right. So going back to this. Uh, where was I? At? Mm. Let me just double check. Uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah. Okay, so uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse um, 11 again, persecutions, afflictions, which, oh, Salaki, I was in 2nd uh, Ezra, Salaki, all right, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse um, 
uh, 69 now, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. So a lot of people are going to fold in these different situations, man. All right. A lot of people is going, they're going to be threatened with certain things. Or, I'm going to do this and I will do that to you, you know, your family and X, Y, and Z, and they're going to fold. You know, and we have to pray to the Lord that, you know, he gives us a, a courageous spirits and a mind of fortitude. And we're being trained in these different things now. And, you know, praying and fasting and doing this work now so the Lord will have mercy upon us and, you know, not give us over into these different things, right? But a lot of people are going to fold in these different situations when their life is being threatened or there are different things that they are too clung, un clung unto or it's too uh, connected to things that they love that they can't detach from, you know, to where they're going to give in, all right? So we have to be very mindful of these things, man. The scripture says that he that fainteth in the day of adversity, his strength is small. And we gain strength through the application of these precepts. And the book of Sirach, just to back that up real quick, just to show you that strength comes with uh, obedience. All right. And even Yahweh Shah said, I'll liken this man uh, as a man that built his house upon a rock. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. And then it says, as the waves beat against that house and the streams beat against it, that house wasn't moved because it was founded upon a rock. But that's through that individual's uh, uh, application of the precepts, all right, to where he was stable in the times to come, as opposed to the man that the Lord mentioned that his house is built upon the sand, him that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. So if we aren't really applying these things, we aren't going to have strength in the time to come. Application is key, right? Sirach chapter uh, 51, you know, it's all about the application, man. All right, it's one thing to know the right way, but it's another thing to actually apply it and do it put our own emotions and flesh under subjection to do these things. These things are adding strength to us, man. All right, for these times to come, Sirach chapter 50 and verse uh, 28, I'll start at 27. All right, Yehoshua, the son of Sirach of Jerusalem, hath written in this book the instruction of understanding and knowledge who out of his heart poured forth wisdom. Blessed is he that shall be exercised in these things, right? So let's look up that word exercise. It says, blessed is he who is exercised in this instruction and in this wisdom right so the word exercise it says a uh, condition of being in active operation practice for the sake of training okay Exer exercise execution of power physical or spiritual exercise right so you're putting it into action keep busy keep at work all right oversee engage busily so this is what we're busy with you know, yeah, we got responsibilities and jobs and families and so on and so forth. But this is what we should be busy with the ministry. Right. The building up of ourselves, the 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 um, working on the inner man, the inside of the cup and so on and so forth. These are the things that we should be busy with that should be occupying our mind and occupying our time and mental attention and focus and so on and so forth. Right. It says meaning physically act physical activity for fitness. Right. Um. Uh, a carrying out of an action, a doing or practicing a disciplinary task, right? So, you know, just pulling out these uh, various points and the verb, it says to employ, put into active use. All right. It says also uh, to make use of also in regard to mental and spiritual training. OK, so this exercise applying these precepts is mental and physical training that is preparing us for the true battle. All right. The battle of our faith and you know, being put in the fire and coming forth out as gold. All right. And what shows forth that gold that we come out as gold is our ability to continue to apply these precepts, apply this wisdom in the midst of adversity. That's what Job said. When I'm tried, I will come forth out as gold. I've held fast my thy steps and from thy way I've not declined. All right. So he was exercised enough to be in the fire. All right. And still apply the precepts, still keep his faith. Right. So the same thing as the fire intensifies us being able to still apply these things, these different principles, the things that we're learning shows forth that we're gold. Right. This is mental and spiritual training that we're going through, which is necessary for the days to come. Right. But it says uh, back in Sirach 50 and verse um, 28, blessed is he that shall be exercising these things and he that layeth them up in his heart shall become wise for if he do them. He shall be strong to all things, right? So the application of these things gives us fortitude, strength, stability. It says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You think that's just knowing it? Having the wisdom and knowledge of these things? No, all right? It's the application of it as well. 
right? It says, for the light of the Lord leadeth him who giveth wisdom to the godly. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Aman, aman. All right. So this is where we get strength from. And it all comes from the Lord. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. But he strengthens us through these various exercises that we go through in our daily lives. All right. That's why we don't want to take the, the situations that we're in. And, you know, we don't want to go through this life on autopilot as if the Lord isn't in the midst of all these things. All right. He's in the midst of shit that's going on at your job. He's in the midst of, you know, what you're going on, what's going on at, at home and everything like that, because everything is a, is a, is a part of the, the training that we have to go through. All right, it's a part of building us up in one way or shape or form. We don't always know exactly what the Lord is trying to pull out of us. All right. And when we don't, we should be praying to the Lord as Elhu guided Job to do so. If you don't understand why you're going through certain things and pray to the Lord and ask him. All right. And if you've sinned, you know, as the scripture says, that which I see not teach thou me. And if I've offended, I will do so no more. Right. So at times we don't always understand, but we still should trust the process. Now the Lord said all things work to the good of them that love that love him. All right, and we show forth our love through our obedience. So if we're really trying to obey the Lord, everything that we're going through is for our refinement. All right, it says through the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. When you read that in the NLT, it says sorrow has a refining influence upon us, right? You know, so these are very key things that we need to be holding on to, you know, um, uh, as we enter into these uh, evil days, man. But it says, for if he do them, he shall be strong to all things for the light of the Lord leadeth him who giveth wisdom to the godly. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Aman, Aman, right? All right, so let's grab this. Uh, let's go back to Second Ezra, and then we're gonna finally grab that account, you know, to get uh, the mental state that uh, Elijah was in as he was going through his sufferings, man. All right, even though the Lord uh, uh, was with him. All right, Second Ezra chapter sixteen and verse um, where are we at now? Verse um, uh, sixty nine, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden under foot. So you know, like I was speaking, and a lot of individuals are going to fold. But Adawan writes as I, we are not of them that draw back. All right, unto perdition. Lord's will, we aren't those that are going to fold, all right? But it says, uh, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, all right? For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. They sh it says, then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold and the fire through the adversity, through the affliction, right? Here, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. So the Lord goes into all this affliction and all this hell that's going to happen, right? But then he comes back and reassures us that I'm going to deliver you out of it. Does that mean that it's going to be comfortable? Absolutely not. But does that mean that the end result is going <laughs> to be for our benefit and our good and it ends with deliverance in the kingdom? Absolutely. If we hold fast our faith to the end. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts. So we're in those points of discomfort. These are the things that should, we should bring to mind to get us through it. All right. Be not afraid, uh, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord. Let not uh, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Right. All right. So uh, let's uh, finish off with this in the book of First Kings. All right, 1 Kings chapter uh, 19 and verse uh, 1. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with, with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Right, so, you know, Elijah, you know, he was uh, being hunted down, all right, by Jezebel, <laughs> okay, you know. She was trying to trying to uh, kill him, man. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Yahweh, take away my life, for I am not better than my father. So imagine the distress that he was going through to the point to where he's like, Lord, I'm tired. Just take my life. I'm suffering. I'm, I'm on the run, you know, <laughs> catching all this hell. Right. So this is the brink that he was brought to. It says, uh, it says, verse five. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. <laughs> all right. So look at how the Lord intervened. He was at the brink of wanting to die. And then the Lord sent an angel to him. All right. So we're going to be brought to the brink in certain instances. And then the Lord is going to have a miracle happen. 
All right, he's going to strengthen us some, somehow, some way in our faith and, you know, encourage us. All right, the scriptures talk about um, uh, wait upon the Lord and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. So we have to continue to have the mindset to serve the Lord and he will strengthen us. All right. He will strengthen the weak knees and the, the feeble hands and so on and so forth. Right. So the Lord will strengthen us. All right. He knows what we're going through, what we're experiencing, the middle battles and so on and so forth. The Lord will give us the necessary strength. All right. But it says, uh, uh, it says, and he looked and behold, there was a cake baking in the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh, came again the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of the Most High. All right, so that shows you the power of the Lord, man. He gave him that, that uh, those meals and he, he didn't, uh, he went off the strength of those meals for 40 days, man, and 40 nights, all right? You know? So that shows you the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. But, you know, really just pulling that out to show that, you know, that's the point that he was brought to, man. All right. And so we have to recognize that this is a part of the walk that we're in. And if we want deliverance and salvation, you know, preparing our minds. When I come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. It says, gird up the loins that I mind. Right. So we have to know that this is what, you know, this is a part of it. All right. But yet we see that <laughs> uh, uh, he was covered. The Lord still fed him. The Lord was taking care of him. The Lord was with him, even though he was, you know, he, he was brought to this, you know, this low point. So it's a part of the battle that we're in, man. So, you know, without, you know, uh, pretty much the point's been made. You know, Lord's what I was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.